It's only been a one-sided love affair. Yes. As, as of late. Very well, Ronald. The first Japanese guy to really bring jiu-jitsu into the sport in Japan to show that, like, you can win these fights without having to have this great striking game that before everyone in Japan thought you had to be a good striker to be able to win anything. He said, no, you can win these fights with, with just grappling, and that's what he was doing. Well, now at 40 years old, he still have it to show it to the next generation of guys. He's giving up 11 years to Sosa. He's getting nothing but five a inches in height. Yeah, but he's you know, like five inches more around the chest. It kind of reminds me of you at the buffet. Remember, we're uh, going for breakfast <laughs> as your eggs are being cooked. You get all nervous. <laughs> I tend to overindulge at the breakfast buffet here at the hotel. Oh my goodness. Hotel. You and I both. Here we go. No touching of the gloves. Kidioka wants nothing to do with that. Man, I'm mad at him, but... I mean, how do you see this fight breaking down, Frank, other than the obvious? I mean, even though. Old guard is a new guard. Yeah. New game. Despite the 20 submission wins for Kitaoka. Well, they're all very, you know, armbar, triangle, yeah. you know, plot, they're, like, they're very basic. Not, I don't want to say basic, I'm not disrespecting the at all, but it's the very, very basic, the ones that we learn yep. as white belts, the first, very first set of things. And, you know, Suza is very much more than that. He's got submissions from different angles, different positions. I mean, his setups, ooh, oh, wow. he lands a right, and so does Kitaoka. But Suza doesn't like to get hit. Kitaoka doesn't mind getting hit. This yeah. That could be the upset of the fight. Well, now they're grappled up. There's no way Suze let go, ever. But he's got to deal with a lot of power and strength here. Yeah. This is where inches, technique is extremely important. Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. He rolls for the leg. Trying to use that for a takedown. But now it's Kithyoka that's got the one arm underneath and the head. Wow. I'm not sure the knee's going to do much. doesn't have the base set. Now he does. Pinches his elbow down. Kido pinches his elbow down. Ooh. Yeah, I know, right? Well, this is not where he wants to be. Well, he's smart at scrambling back up to the top position. He's cut. His knees worked. Underhook here by Kitioka. Oh. cut wide open. There's a big split. Those, those knees work. We didn't think those knees were doing much damage. I don't think, was that from the knee or from when they hit the mat? I thought it was from the knee. I will be utterly in awe if I see a replay and those knees landed like that. Interesting to note. Look at where the cut is. Is it above the eye? I'd like to get a different camera angle here. We can't see it from where we are. Oh, it is just above. And it's just above the eye. Just above the eyebrow. eyebrow. It wasn't that neat because I hit nope. him on the right side. Yeah. Nope. Not that neat either. Nope. Jason Herzog is informing us it is a big cut in the eyebrow. Yeah. So if it opens up, it could be a problem because you can't see. It's a huge problem because the blood will drip right into his eye. See, people just staring at it. He's hunting now. He's smart. Not going to see. Yeah. He knows. He keeps walking into that knee, though. 
Because if you want to go for a takedown here, bail out, bail out through your head. Oh, I don't think it's a good idea. You got to get in a position where you do. But he's able to pass the guard. When you end up on top, you have to be able to strike with a guy like this. If you, if you can't start striking against Souza, he's going to just tie you up and get into a submission position. And that was a bad position for so Kyoko to try to take him down. His head was caught. Kyoko trying to get around the referee. Loading up that left. There it is. He's running into his elbow. Oh, you can see the wobbliness there of Souza. Again, he's loading up for that right kick. And Souza, nice job. 42 to go here. Spin attempt there. Yeah. Spin nothingness. Now he's jogging on the spot. Let's not act like we're surprised. Soon as he needs a jab. Keep on the outside, he'll get frustrated and charge in and give him a takedown. Just keep jabbing him. You can just or see him. him. Yeah. <laughs> that you can just see him turn that right foot behind and then just spin it out. Sosa is actually doing a very good job of, of cutting off the space. To go here, first of three rounds. We're scheduled for three. Yes, elbows are allowed in this one. The distance is diminishing between these two. They're getting closer and closer. Despite the fact the power that Kitoka brings, it's actually Sosa throwing those jabs, throwing more strikes, landing those lefts non-stop. These guys are throwing bombs here. But look, he's taking the big step back. Yeah. See? He's stepping in, he's getting his little jabs and little jabs. He steps inside Kitoka hits with two big heavy shots every single time. Nice head kick. Oh. Jumping knee there, trying to catch him off the ropes. Hit him in the eye. Round one has come to an end. Roberto Satoshi Sosa. 10 years younger, 11 years younger than his opponent, Satoru Kitioka, in his 70th professional fight. Now, the real question is this. If you are in Sosa's corner, Frank, what are you telling him? Keep jabbing. Keep on the outside. Don't charge him. He's going to come at you. You're going to frustrate him with that jab. Get a straight jab in his face. Every time he comes in, he's going to try and shoot. You want to use that to your advantage. Don't be scared. Don't try to stop the takedown. Let him take you down so you can start rolling him up or use the momentum to end up in a position that you want to end up in. If I'm in Kiyoka's corner, I'm telling him you have to keep moving your head left and right. You can't keep down the center because you're going to keep catching those jabs. You're going to start trying to hit him with heavy power shots. And then when you take him down, make sure that you are past his guard and in a position to strike and try to finish. Well, clearly he's got no fear in exchanging toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. But the strength, despite the fact that his opponents, that his opponent has more submission victories than he does have fights, he's a four-time world Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion. The strength belongs there. Use what brought you to the table. He's got to be very careful with that gash over his left eyebrow. Or on his left eyebrow. And that's a right hand there. Now he's got two jabs there. He doesn't like to get hit. So you can tell he's backing away and like flailing in his defense. But he's so much longer, he's able to catch him. And this is what he wanted. See, you know, keep him out, keep him out. Eventually he's going to shoot on you. Get the Yoko with a nice take pass. down there. Inside yeah, control, yeah. yep. He's inside control. Now this doesn't really, it wouldn't concern so so much. Oh, but he's allowed oh. to strike. Kyoko's cut. Is he? Yeah, he's bleeding all over his arms. I can see it inside. Not so much. You can't see it so much in the, in the feed. No, he's, he actually just touched it. Now he knows he's coming. The referee saw that. Now he's stopping it. They're gonna have a look at Kyoko. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, that's a nice gash. <laughs> We're just over one minute into round number two. First round, it was Sosa getting checked out by the doctor. Same area. Looks like it's a sit. No, it's actually oh. higher. It's eyelid. Yeah. It's eyelid. Uh, Hers out just told us it's eyelid that got cut, not, not um, eyebrow. This might be done. Eyelids are tough. No, it looks like it's higher from the, from the camera angle. See? Look where the... What was it from? Oh, just a beautiful punch. <laughs> Straight shot. Just a perfectly placed right yeah. hand. He ate it, he's walking right through it. Could possibly be saying to his corner. Well, oh, they're letting him continue. In the first round, it was Sosa getting his eye checked for blood. Second round, it's Kitaoka. We still have lots to go here in the second round. Sosa again, using that right foot, opening it up. You know there's a kick coming. There it is. Wow, he's throwing some combinations. Just not sitting on those punches, though. Well, you know, striking is a, is a new phenom for him. He doesn't really like the punch that much. He prefers the grapple. That's his whole game. He's learning. It's a process. But he threw four punches, and three of them got through. Foot stop attempted there by Kithioka. Hammer fist. Trying to get past the legs of his opponent, wanting him to pace. Going for a leg lock now. Oh, there. Dangerous situation yeah. now. This is just a moment is all he needs. That was stupid. That was a, a really dumb mistake to try to battle in that position. Keith Ayoka now has just under three minutes to defend. So it's far doing so good, but... Look for the stabilization there, looking for that armbar, looking for that triangle choke as well. Is Sosa. Now he's got the arm. Kipdioka trying to get it out. He does a great job getting out there. Now wow. he's stacking his opponent. This is probably punches. him taking a break. Trying to get some punches through. I know the comparisons with Kron Gracie will continue, but if Kron takes your back, game over. it is often game I over. Man, I, can't, it's, I don't remember anybody. I could be wrong. I don't know if historians look correctly. I can't remember anybody getting away when Kron got your back. I'm not talking yeah. like hooks in back. Yeah. I'm talking about he just got you back and he's finishing you. And the talk from anyone that's, that's involved with Sosa is he needed one opportunity, just one opportunity, and that was the opportunity there. Just goes to show you how good Kitaoka is, that he had a four-time Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion on his back. And there's a big difference, gi, no gi, oh, in yeah. MMA. And now that Kitaoka is way sweatier, could be more difficult. You know, the best way to stop an armbar is punch him in the face. You know, so it's like obviously you add his strikes, the position changes, you put a ring up, all of a sudden it changes everybody's game a little bit. Now we're seeing some combinations oh, wow. there. Oh, and a beautiful punch there by Sosa. He's dropped. Kitaoka going there for the finish. He gets his KO. He gets at least a TKO. Wow. Roberto Satoshi Sosa with a stunning finish here at Ryzen 15. Incredible. Wow. That was amazing. For him to be able to stick with it, stick out of his element, and use his hands to finish his fight, whenever he knew he was a grappler, that's incredible. And you saw him in the beginning of the first round. He started landing more and more combos. He got in the second round, started landing more and more combos, and here we are to finish. With all due respect, Frank, there is no way that I thought that was going to happen. Unbelievable performance. There's the opportunity he had to submit him. He had the shot. Didn't but need it, though. Didn't need it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs>
Game over. Who says you can't throw a 12-punch combination in MMA? Look at that. I mean, the technique is not 100%, but he's putting power into them. It's the 12th one that drops him. 13, 14 to finish him off. Referee said, no, we are done. Great job. Great job by the officials. Great job by the involved. I'm just looking over at Kitioka right now. He looked at his corner and basically asked him, what happened? What's, what, what, what just happened there? What happened was because we didn't have any defense and he got hit in the head 12 times. That is what happened. Oh, that is a gash. Jason Herzog was right. The bound. That, that's got to be an inch and a half there. My goodness. It's cute. Blitz character. Give his kids something to poke on while they're stomping on his lap. Oh, my. Speaking of which, how do you, uh, those of you who don't know, Joe's a uh, soccer coach. So I am. Kids soccer up in Canada. How the uh, last game of the, of the season, right? The last okay. game of our indoor season took place uh, yesterday morning, and uh, happy to say my assistant coach uh, coached them on to a victory, 2-1 victory. Good. Right. Sosa says hello to the crowd. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? The crowd obviously cheers back. I didn't show any ground. He was strong and hard to submit. Is he strong? People don't realize how important it is to be here at Ryzen. Overcome with emotion, he said, sorry. I've been watching Pride since I was a kid. It's been so much to me. This is a dream come true. It's always been my dream to stand in this ring, to get a win, to hold a microphone in a post-fight interview. Thank you to everyone who supported me. Now, I can't be stopped. I will become a champion in Ryzen. Thank you, everybody. Well, no doubt, overcome with emotion, Frank. Yeah, that's a big deal. You grew up watching Pride, you grew up watching like Kokop and Van Lee Silva and Fedor Emelianenko do battle, and all of a sudden, you know, it, it, it goes away for a while, and a new organization comes up in its place, and it's building it up, and you're like, dude, like, I got a shot now to actually be a Japanese, you know, half Japanese, half Brazilian, living in Japan. There you see him there with Lenny Hart. He's going to everybody that was still around from the Pride days. And he's like, I mean, this is people he grew up with, that he watched, you yeah. know, as a kid. Now he's saying he gets to be in the same way. Yeah, it's a different name, but it's essentially the same thing in Japan. It's a huge name. Seizing the moment. Carpe diem.